Hello, this is Mark Stevens, and this is your Through the Bible with Dr. Stevens broadcast. And we're continuing our study of uh, the Gospel according to Mark, and we're still in chapter 1. And we're going to start off on uh, Mark chapter 1, verse 19. It says, And when he had gone a little further thence, he saw James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. Now, uh, if you remember, in uh, the first lesson we uh, saw a similar uh, situation, but this is not a discrepancy from the account we, we had in the first lesson. This is just a difference in several people telling the same story. Uh, so here we see James and John, uh, and the same account happened to Peter and Andrew. Remember, they were all fishermen and net menders, so when Jesus encountered them, they all shared the same experience. Verse 20, it says, And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. Now, fishing was an honorable way to make a living. Uh, these men uh, knew how to work hard and get the job done. Uh, without hesitation, they answered the call Jesus had placed on their lives. We see here that James and John had given up family, job, and their home security to follow Jesus. In Mark chapter 10, uh, verses 29 and 30, we see that um, what happens to those who give up the things of the world to follow Jesus. And in verse 29 in chapter 10, it says, And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or land for my sake and the gospels. Uh, in verse 30 it says, But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the world to come eternal life. So Jesus is talking about two separate things here. He's saying that when you give up everything to follow him, You'll gain uh, an earthly family, uh, your brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, but with that will come persecution. But you also have eternal life and, uh, and, and riches to come. So God, you know, uh, Jesus is letting them know that uh, you're not just giving up something, you're gaining something. Uh, one of my favorite scriptures is, uh, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. When you put God first, he makes sure that you're taken care of. And, and so Jesus, as we studied in the last lesson, uh, when he told Peter to cast his nets into the water, Jesus, Peter just cast a net, and the net broke and had so many fish in it. Jesus took care of that, their families. They caught enough fish that for a season, they didn't even have to work. So when they followed Jesus, Jesus had already taken care of them and their families. All right, verse 22, Mark chapter 1, it says, And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. Meaning, Jesus didn't just quote scripture uh, like a scribe would that would just read in the temple. Uh, Jesus' doctrine was based upon his uh, uh, e eternal knowledge of the Word of God because he is the Word of God according to John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. So Jesus spoke with authority, not just... Um, you know, uh, reading something off a script. Um, scribes had limited knowledge in the scriptures, but Jesus, like I said, is the word. Uh, his message is a message of first-hand knowledge. Uh, Jesus didn't bring uh, a faltering message. Uh, the scribes were uncertain, and their message was a message of interpretation and not fact. Jesus gave facts. Jesus gave uh, the positive message because he was the message. He is the truth. He didn't just tell the truth. Jesus is the truth. All right, uh, Mark 1, 23. It says, There was in our synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out. In verse 24, it says, Saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus, son of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. So here we see um, that this man was possessed of demons. Uh, and, and this scripture really proves uh, just who demons are and how they operate. They try to control and take over a person's soul. Um, one of the things here we see is that uh, uh, Jesus, uh, they were recognized by Jesus. They said, I know uh, thee who art thou. Who, I know thee who thou art. And demons recognize the authority of Jesus. That's why when you cast out a devil, 
You say in Jesus name. It's not your authority that caused the devil to leave, but it's the name of Jesus. It's the name of Jesus. Uh, Jesus uh, is the judge that will determine where demons go. Because they were, they were thought they were going to be tormented before their time, meaning the lake of fire. They, they, they know the end is, is near. But uh, Jesus uh, uh, didn't deal with that at that moment. But they knew that, that the doom is impending for them. All right. Uh, verse 25. Uh it says, and Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. So Jesus didn't get in a dialogue with this demonic force, this demonic spirit. He told him to shut up and come out. And we see that uh, that Jesus was speaking to his evil spirit and the man and not to the man. Uh, Jesus is the Lord over all. Jesus is even the Lord over this evil spirit. And his evil spirit had to obey the voice of Jesus. Uh, when Jesus told his spirit to hush, it hushed. When Jesus told his spirit to come out, it came out. It had to obey Jesus, uh, as we see. Look at verse 26. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. See, the unclean spirit didn't want to leave uh, this body. Uh, and, 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 and fought to, come, to stay in. But it couldn't, um, it couldn't go against the word of Jesus and the authority that Jesus had. Uh, the unclean spirit tore him and cried with a loud voice because the spirit was vacating a place that he thought was secure. The devil will not give up without a struggle, uh, but the devil is subject to Jesus. Uh, the Bible tells us to resist the devil and he will flee. But first it says, submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee. We're no match for the devil ourselves, but the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus are more than powerful enough to contend with the devil. Uh, just uh, as in this verse we just read, an unclean spirit obeyed the command of Jesus. We can also fight unclean spirits with the name of Jesus and the power of his blood. All right. Verse 28. Mark chapter 1, verse 28. It says, And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region and about Galilee. Verse 29. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. And as we remember in the earlier uh, lesson, uh, we mentioned that Peter's home was on the edge of a town uh, there at Capernaum by the Sea of Galilee. Uh, and maybe they rested there for a night. A lot of times Jesus uh, and the disciples arrested Peter's uh, house uh, or his family's house uh, when they were uh, traveling. Verse 30, but Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever and anon they tell her, tell him of her. So we see in the scripture that Simon, better known as Peter, was married. We also can see that uh, from this verse that his wife's mother was in the house with them. Someone told Jesus uh, of this woman's fever. Verse 31. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Immediately the fever left and she ministered unto them. I love this verse. It says immediately the fever left. It doesn't even really say Jesus said a prayer. It just said uh, that he came and took her by the hand. His touch healed her uh, and lifted her up. And immediately it says she ministered unto them. I love this because this woman uh, got her healing and she didn't waste any time serving Jesus. And that's how we should be. When we get saved and delivered and set free, we should be uh, uh, steadfast and immediate in our service to Jesus. Uh, all it took was one touch of Jesus' hand for this woman to be made whole. And this wasn't a partial healing, it was a total recovery. Uh, in fact, it, she was just, you know, uh, uh, energetic and she got healed enough to go uh, fix dinner and take care of the disciples and to serve them. Uh, verse 32. And then even when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils. So you remember we read earlier that his fame spread abroad. And I'm sure that when they heard about Jesus uh, healing Peter's mother-in-law and casting the devil out of people, that everybody that had a sickness or uh, a, a need of deliverance, they came to Jesus. And it says that they, they, um, they brought him, they brought unto him all that were diseased. Uh, not some, all. So that meant they emptied out the whole area of Capernaum with sick people and brought him to Jesus. So we see that the fame of Jesus spread. Uh, by that evening, a large group of sick and those possessed to gather to be healed. Uh, these that were brought were almost assuredly the ones that the physicians had given up on. Uh, when you're sick 
and it seems there's no cure. And it's time to locate somebody with some healing power. Um, and these people were probably like the woman with the issue of blood and the woman that had the back um, uh, 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 pain in her back. And the woman with the pain in her back said, Jesus uh, commanded the spirit of infirmity to leave and that spirit of infirmity left and her back was healed. And so through Jesus, a lot of people were healed, delivered, set free. Mark chapter 1 verse 33. And it says, And all the city was gathered together at the door. Uh, verse 34. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. And it seems that these miracles that Jesus had done spread like wildfire. The whole town knew about it, and they were gathered at the front door of Peter's house. Uh, Jesus healed them all. He cast out devils, uh, and, and he took care of these demonic forces that enslaved the people. Verse 35, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there he prayed. And we're going to stop on this verse before we continue any further. But I just want to close here because I want us to understand that when Jesus did great miracles, he did it in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, even though he's the Son of God and a part of the triune God, Jesus was in a human form. So he needed to pray. He needed to meditate. He needed to uh, rest his body. He needed to eat. Everything a human had to do, Jesus had to do. And he would go to a solitary place and he would pray. And, and whenever Jesus did a lot of great miracles, you know, between the miraculous events, you always find Jesus going to a solitary place and praying. And this is, should be a good message for us. You know, in the quiet of the early morning is when we should pray. Uh, Jesus went to pray, not with others, but alone. You know, uh, the Bible says, be still and know that I am God. You know, a lot of times we, we get caught up in a lot of... Um, uh, crowds and hype but sometimes God just wants us alone just like Jacob wrestled with God alone that's when Jacob got his breakthrough some of us don't get our breakthroughs with God because we don't spend enough time alone with God when you get a chance meditate on that that's Psalm, Psalm 46 and 10 be still and know that I am God and the most precious time we can spend is, is time alone with God so don't ever forget that all right, so we're going to close right here, and uh, we're going to pray, and then we're going to uh, pick up the rest of uh, Mark chapter 1 in our next uh, broadcast. We're, we're trying to keep um, these little messages short so you can get some nuggets to carry you through the day, but also we want to hit the Bible verse by verse. Uh, we don't want to rush through it. We want to take our time. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would help us to better understand your word. Give us clarity and understanding of your truth. Forgive us of our sins. Help us, dear God, to put you first and your word first in everything we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. Take care.